Hey, what's up traders? If you've been looking to use the TradingView platform, but not sure how to customize it and work through all the settings, well, don't worry, I got you. Because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to change the colors on your charts, how to change the ticker symbols, how it shows up with the description, with the company logo, and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. By the way, if you're new around here, I'm stock market coach and option trader, Jason Brown. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, or if you enjoyed this video at the end, be sure to remember to give it a thumbs up. So let's get into it. Here we have the TradingView platform pulled up. This is the web version. Works pretty much the same if you're using the desktop app. But we're gonna take a look at the SPX, the S&P 500. Once you get into the chart, no matter what ticker symbol that you're looking at, just right click in the chart and you can scroll all the way down to settings. You click that button and it's gonna bring up the settings so that you can customize it. Now you can move this around just in case you need to look above it, below it, and see what the changes are doing. Another thing I wanna point out, we're working with a candlestick stock chart, but let's just say you wanted a line chart. You could click this drop down and you can pick a different style chart. So if you were working with a line chart, notice how the options or the chart settings change and you can only change the color of the line. But if you switch back to a candlestick chart, which is what we're gonna work with here, notice we can change a lot more things. So the first thing is you can change the color of your candlestick based on the previous close. So when you click that button, you'll notice some of the candlesticks changed colors. I'm zoom in and then I'll do it one more time. See if I unclick that and then I click it again, it will change it based on the previous day's close. I'm not sure why you would want that to happen. So I'm going to uncheck that because I want all my candlesticks to be true to the current day that it's in. Now, if you don't like the red and green setup, maybe that's too many colors. Maybe it looks too Christmassy for you. Don't worry. You can change that. So the body of the candlestick, let's just say you want your positive days, your up days to be white. And let's say you want your down days to be black. So you can quickly look at it and say white is up, black is down. So that's how you can change that. You can also switch the borders or the outline of the body. So see right here on the down days, it's black candlestick, but it's a red outline. Maybe you just want it to be completely black. And so you would switch that to a completely black outline or you can change a different color. Same thing with the updates. You can have it outlined in green or you can switch it to be all white, but it makes it a little bit harder to see when you do that. Maybe you want to outline it in black. So now the white candlestick is outlined in black. Same thing goes for the wicks. So if I zoom in, the wick is this area above the candlestick. And then the second one is going to be the area below the candlestick if there was a bearish wick. So you can again have that downward wick be red or you can make it black and then you can leave the top of the wick to be green or whatever color that you want. I'm going to switch this back to how it was. So I'm going to have that be green. I'm going to have this be uh, red and then I'm going to have the body be green. I'm going to have the body be red and then switch this back to the body being red. But I just wanted to show you how you can change it, right? And then you're gonna pick your time zone down here if you wanna change that. Precision is how much do you want to round it off to one decimal, two decimal, three decimal points. I just use it, leave it on default, all right? So let's go to the next one, which is your status line. Now, if you don't know what your status line is, your status line is this area up here. This is called the status line. It's gonna give you the status of the stock symbol and other things that you're looking at. So let's walk through what the options are for the status line. So number one, you can have the logo. So see right here where it has the S&P 500 logo. If I uncheck that, that red circular logo goes away. And if I check it, the red circular logo comes back. Same thing with the title. I can uncheck it and not have the title or the full explanation of the stock symbol up there, or I can check it. It'll have the logo and the full explanation, which is the S&P 500. Now you can switch that and say you just want the ticker symbol. It would have the SPX. The reason I'm not too keen on having the ticker symbol is because you already have the ticker symbol just above it. So I don't find that to be useful to have the ticker symbol doubled up right below it. 
So I'd rather have description. You could also have both the ticker symbol and the description, but again, you have the ticker symbol right above it. So for me, I don't find it as useful to have the ticker symbol doubled down there twice. So I like to leave it on description, but at least now you know what this does. Now your chart values, if you uncheck that, notice when I hover my mouse over anywhere on the chart, I don't see the pricing or the values. If I hit the chart values again, now if I hover over a specific candlestick, it'll tell me the open, that's what that O is. It'll tell me the high, that's what that H is, the low and the close of the day. So for this candlestick, it'll say it opened at 5,340, the high was 5,341 and 88 cents, and then the low was 5,256 and 93, and then it closed at 5,267. 0.85. So that's what those chart values are telling you. For some reason, you don't want them up there. You just click on that and close them out. I find that to be um, beneficial. If you click bar change values, it's going to give you the percent change of the bar from the previous day. So here is saying that the bar moved up 0.77% from the previous day. That's not that important to me. And then this starts to get a little cluttered. So I personally don't want it up there you can also add your volume up there but i choose to have my volume down here below so i don't necessarily need it up top but if you wanted to see it up top next to all the other values you could have it up there and then down here uh, for your indicator so see how volume is an indicator on the chart well over here if i click titles notice volume over here disappeared it took it away so now if i click titles again it shows the titles of my indicators um, right there if i didn't want the value of volume up there but i just wanted to know what indicator i had down here it'll leave the name up there but it won't show the value as i roll my mouse over i think it's important to have the value as you roll your mouse over it also prevents you again from adding it up here to that area now arguments if you have some type of arguments on your chart that you, I don't use arguments, but if you had like code or arguments, it would show up on the chart. I don't use that, so I don't wanna to spend too much time there. So let's go down here to scales and lines. So this is pretty simple. Do you want your currency and unit always visible or only visible when you mouse over it? Uh, if you change it to uh, always invisible, it's basically saying like if you are trading something that has a currency and unit, uh, they won't show the, the number. So if you're trading Forex for an exchange or something like that, I would rather just leave it always visible. So like here, it always shows everything in USD. Um, it could be prices. It could be where you're buying or selling. It will show those units on the chart, whether you're trading stocks, options, forex, currency, whatever the case may be. So when you set your alerts, if you want to buy at a certain price, it would show it in USD or whatever currency that you want. And you can change the currency if you're uh, working off a different country. I always like to just have that visible and not just when I mouse over it. Um, I like no overlapping price labels. The plus button just allows you to quickly add an alert to your chart. Uh, you know, when you're, if you click on this, it'll kind of give you a little demonstration of this where when you roll over something, you can add a plus button to quickly add an alert, which is pretty much right here. And so if I were to uncheck that plus button, it should float on your chart, but I like to have mine stuck up here so I can just hit it. So I just leave that check. Countdown bars until close. All of this I pretty much leave. Now here's one important part that I think you should look at. Well, let me back up for a second. Indicators and financial names. So I like to have the name of my indicators on the chart. If I uncheck that, the name of volume uh, is unhidden from down there. If I check it back, you see how volume just showed back up right here. Just reminding you what indicator um, that is. And then if you click that, it'll show you the value for the day. I don't like having that extra thing blocking the numbers right there. And then pre and post market. This is really cool. So if you want to know what's happening after hours, like the markets close 
what is the market doing uh, it'll show you uh, the pre and post market if it's up or down so if it's up it'll be an orange line if it's down it'll be a blue line you could technically change that to a red line or any other color that you want but that is how you get the pre and post uh, market numbers on your chart and you can see what's happening before the market um, opens or, or closes uh, last but not le least I'm going to jump down here to day of the week label so day of the week label if you scroll over here you see how it says Friday uh, the 10th May 2024 well, if I uncheck day of the week now when I scroll down here it doesn't let me know what day I'm looking at it still gives you the date so if I go to the 10th I don't know what the 10th was was that Monday was that Tuesday Wednesday Thursday if I click this and I go back to the 10th it lets me know oh that happened on the Friday that could be valuable if you're like oh I noticed that these big sell-offs happen on Friday or a lot of buying happens on Monday it'd be nice to know every time you scroll over a candlestick that you find interesting do you see a pattern noticing that that always happens on a Friday or a Monday and so that's why you may want to leave that on the chart and then here you can change how the date uh, shows up so if you like to see a full year you can swap to that or whatever the case may be now let's go over to the canvas button so with the canvas button this is going to show you everything that's happening in the background so right now I want my background solid but if you want it to be a gradient you can change it and see how it kind of gradients down from green to white to me that's a little bit busy but maybe you like it maybe you want a gray gradient because white is too bright and it hurts your eyes and you kind of have this gray gradient that goes down into a white or again you can have it solid like I have it and then if you like a solid black chart for some people who kind of like that nighttime mode you can also switch it to nighttime mode or <laughs> this dark theme as well I personally prefer the bright theme then your grid lines right so I have vertical and horizontal grid lines you can turn that off if you're like I don't like any grid lines uh, you could just totally turn that off I think the grid lines personally help me just kind of visually separate days and different price levels see how this goes 5500 so grid 5400 5300 so it's separating them by um, 100 it just helps me kind of jump to the next number and understand quickly roughly where the stock is at I'm gonna move this over and let's talk about the crosshairs so the crosshairs is when I move this like this do I want it to be a dashed line do I want it to be a solid line I could just have it as a solid line and go up to this or I could have it as a dash line or a dotted line doesn't really matter it's more about perfect personal preference I'm gonna leave it as a line and leave it gray watermark you see how the stock symbol behind here is watermarked S&P if I uncheck that it takes the ticker symbol off I really like those especially as I'm shooting a YouTube video and you're like well what stock symbol are we talking about it's very easy to click that watermark and have it there now I also like having it as this gray because I don't want it to be so bright or a color that is conflicting with the green and red candlesticks on the chart we scroll down here text so this 14 is about the right size for me any smaller it gets a little tough to read your numbers too much bigger and it's taking up too much space so I find 14 to be about the perfect space for me and then your lines um, I have them black so if you want it to be white uh, you can make them white but I, I like it black uh, if we have any lines kind of shooting over to here and then navigation buttons visible over mouse over pane buttons I'll leave those alone margin I really don't touch those I uh, just kind of leave them how they are let's go over here to trading so your buy sell buttons if you're using trading view to uh, place trades uh, what buttons do you want to see so if you notice when I click this those buttons disappear when I click this they're back so if I were to click 540 or this red button that would be telling the market that potentially I want to buy but I don't have this hooked up to 
an account. So you see how it opened this trading panel down here, but I don't have this hooked up to an account. So I'm going to minimize that. If you had this hooked up to your account where you can trade through it, that is what these buy and sell buttons are. So you can click the, you know, bid or the ask right here. This is what well, do you want to sell or do you want to buy? So you can click those and boom, it'll be ready to place an order for you. Do you want it to do instant order placement? I would not let it do instant order placement unless you're day trading and you just really need to um, execute quickly. Do you want it to play a sound when you are filled? And then what kind of a sound? So if you press that button, it'll play whatever noise that it sounds like. Uh, appearance positions, you can have your profit and loss on the screen, your reverse buttons, your orders, your brackets. I don't use this to trade, but this is where you would manage all of those buttons. Last but not least, events. So on the screen, I have economic events. So when I roll my mouse over here, you can see it'll say like GDP growth was coming out this day, personal income, stuff like that. If I uncheck this, it takes away all those economic events. I like having those economic events on the calendar so that when I'm trading, I'm looking at the market, I understand that something is coming up and I can quickly roll over and say, what is that? Same thing down here for latest news. If you uncheck that, notice that little thunderbolt went away. And then if I check it again, that little lightning bolt comes back. If I click it, it'll give me the latest news and I can click on that news and I can read it or watch it, whatever the case may be. So I like having the latest news on there. News notification, I'm not really sure um, what that does unless it's like real time news. So I can't really speak to that. Your alert lines, uh, again, I don't, if you have any alerts on your chart, it'll show you where you set your alerts. And then do you only want active alerts or alerts that you've set in the past still on your screen? Now that you have everything fully customized, there's one more thing I want you to be aware of. Down here under template, once you get everything set up, you can actually save it as a template. So if you click save as, we'll call this a test template, and then voila, you can save it. So anytime you want to jump back and forth between templates, if I say I want the Brown report custom, so I like it when I need it in black and white, or if you have a nighttime trading theme versus so it's easier on your eyes versus the daytime trading theme, you can jump back and forth and say, let's switch back to those themes or we can switch back to that test template uh, that we just checked out. So just know that you can save your custom templates so that way you can jump back and forth between them at any given time. So that's it. I hope you feel more comfortable using the TradingView platform from a settings standpoint. And if you like this video, be sure to check out some of the other videos where I show you how to add technical indicators to your charts, how to uh, customize your toolbar up top, and a whole lot more. So give this video a thumbs up, check out the next video here that's somewhere on this page, or click the link in the description. I'll see you on the next one.